Patricia, you're on the National Cannabis Banking Coalition. Yes. That is fascinating. It is. It is. Uh, this is a subject that almost every business wants to be able to talk about around the water cooler at the party. They want to know a little bit about it. It doesn't always affect all of us. Maybe. Let's talk a little bit about that, though. Uh, let's first set it up. What is banking cannabis? Banking cannabis is providing financial services, usually depository banking, for businesses that are state legal, so they are state licensed um, cannabis growers, providers, retailers, producers. Is it legal to bank cannabis? It is at the state level, it is not at the federal level. Okay, so how does that impact someone that's trying to do some banking? Well, uh, banks are charged with anti-money laundering regulations and Bank Secrecy Act regulations. That is a problem because those are federal laws and federal regulations that we follow that require us to report to the federal agencies and law enforcement when there are uh, activities that are federally illegal taking place and the monetary transactions that happen around those illegal activities so that the federal government can evaluate and look at what potential crimes are taking place through the financial transactions. How prevailing is this industry in Michigan? How does it affect the general business community? I think that this is important to look at now because we are looking at the need to um, make sure that there are uh, as a solid commerce system and removing this from a uh, cash transaction society, but at the same time there are hurdles and it does impact just about every community because there are businesses that are going to be in engaging in this activity throughout the state. Hi Jeannie, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. You're president and CFO of a bank. That's correct. That's fantastic. Thanks. Are there lots and lots of you out there? There are not lots and lots of me out there, but there are a lot more of me out there than when I first started in this business. Um, typically, when I go to a meeting, the lines in the women's restrooms are much shorter <laughs> than the other side. We'll take it, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's great. Um, so as a woman who's had so much success in your career, what, what piece of advice would you give to women business owners? The biggest piece of advice I would give to a business owner that's a woman is be confident in your strengths. And what I mean by that is you can have um, two business owners, a, a male and a female, and they can have the exact same business plan. And both of these business plans are going to have 10 points on them. Eight of them are going to be strengths and two of them are going to be weaknesses. The male is going to look at that business plan and say, look at this, I'm ready to go. Let's move forward with the next step. And and sometimes you're going to see the female look at that business plan and go, oh, here are the two things I still don't have ready. I'm not ready. I'm not confident. I can't move forward. And they're going to miss out on some amazing opportunity because of that. Know your strengths and be confident in your strengths. And don't let your weaknesses hold you back. Absolutely. We're all working on something. That's right. Yeah. What is it up? Perfect is the enemy of done? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's right. So um, women can use some, some mentorship. Do banks offer mentorship and support for women owners? I can speak to that from my perspective in my bank and say that all of our lenders are acting as mentors and advisors for all of our customers. We know that we can't be successful unless our customers are successful. So anyone who comes into our bank looking for that type of advice is going to get it from our lenders. Excellent. Any other advice you'd give to an owner outside of the banking relationship? I think it's important for women to find other women business owners. And I think it's important for them to network and learn from those people. Great. Thanks so much. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here, Joe. Uh, have some question about, based on the current business climate, what role can bankers play to help small business owners? Uh, banks play a really vital and positive role in the, for small businesses. Community bankers truly take the time to listen to their customers and craft a solution for them that really fits their need, whether or not they're trying to expand their business, trying to become more efficient, 
uh, the, your local banker will, is, is the one that's going to take the time to listen to you and come up with the correct solution for what you're trying to accomplish. Can you give us some specifics about how we might leverage these uh, relationships? Yes, uh, right now is a great time for a customer to really review both their deposit accounts and their loan accounts. There's been a tremendous amount of innovation the last four or five years in terms of, the, of account features that are available, things like mobile applications for businesses, positive pay fraud avoidance, and on top of that, it is a great time to talk to your banker about accessing capital because interest rates are really low, sales are up for lots of people, there's very good business trends, it's never been a better time to look for capital from your local bank to expand your business. So uh, I believe that some bankers have something called a checkup. Is that what we're talking about here? Yeah, that's exactly right. I would just, it'd be a great idea for a local business to go into their, into their local bank with a couple of months of uh, checking account statements and say, this is what I've been doing for the, for the last few years. You know, what's available now? Do I have all the appropriate features for my account based on my business. Excellent. And your local banker is the one that's going to help you with that. Great. Uh, I'm free next Tuesday for a checkup, if you don't mind. Absolutely. All right. We'll see you then. Sounds Thank great. You. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Kyle, it's so great to have an information security officer here from a bank. When it comes to financial transactions, what is the biggest potential threat for a business? You know, in banking, one of the areas that we see the largest rise right now is in payment fraud, meaning online banking, wire transfers, and ACH transactions. And what generally happens that we see is a business has received a request to change their uh, payment instructions related to a wire or ACH, and those instructions didn't come from who they thought it was coming from. What can you tell us some things that we can do to Will we keep ourselves more secure? Absolutely. Probably the number one defense in this is to make sure that your business procedures are set up to identify the fact that the riskiest time in a payment instructions process is when uh, there's a request for new uh, payments to go to somebody you've never paid before or changes to existing instructions, especially when those come via uh, email. The email cannot be the start of the process and the end of the process. There needs to be a step in your procedure to make sure that that's legitimate. So a paper trail, a signature, face to face with somebody, that's what we're talking about? Those are all great suggestions. Whatever works for your organization, but it needs to be something that's stated that no matter what, no matter what social engineering tactics the bad guys try to pressure you into doing, you know from your management team that you don't do that wire or that ACH unless that happens. And how, how deep does this go? Does this go into a manual, into a process form, leadership? Who, who takes control of this? Information? I would say it starts at the top. You know, it starts with the, the CEO of the organization or the owners and just making sure that uh, their staff is trained and understand the procedures and that they're adjusted to account for the fact that um, you need to verify that the request is legitimate. Excellent. Thank you so much. Appreciate having you here. Thank you. Tim, I have a couple of more questions for you. As a banker, what do you need to assess a company's capital needs? Uh, first and foremost, uh, financial information. Bankers live and die um, with numbers. So solid, reliable, accurate, and timely financial information is absolutely critical. Traditional balance sheet, income statement, maybe a statement of cash flows, and projections for businesses that are looking uh, to grow as well. Very important. If a business is good at providing that financial information itself, great. If not, it should get some help from an accountant who can, who can do the job uh, well. Great. Uh, so how important is cash flow? Uh, it's not a number that everybody tracks as readily as a P&L, but how important is that in that conversation with a banker? Absolutely critical. Cash flow is what you pay your bills with, what you pay, make your, your loan payment with, pay your people with, so it's absolutely the most critical piece. And it's very different, um, cash flow to profit or loss is very, very different. So for example, you could be um, making a very good profit, but if your inventory is growing rapidly or your accounts receivable, if people aren't paying you on a timely basis, your cash flow could be negative at the same time on a P&L you're making money. Also a business that's expanding rapidly uh, will need a lot of cash. They might have to go out and buy equipment, 
facilities, finance a larger inventory, uh, larger accounts receivable, so cash flow and profits to uh, very, very different things and it's a very critical uh, to, for a banker in a loan decision. So just real quick, a lot of folks don't know what the formula is. Can you tell us what is the cash flow yeah. formula? So you're going you're gonna to start with profit and loss but then add back or uh, either subtract or add back changes in things like inventory. Um, accounts receivable, um, purchases of major, uh, you know, of major assets, or potentially the sale of major assets, and financing, uh, and that's the, you know, that puts positive cash in, into the business. Great, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Hi, Bill. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So when it comes to this labor market, everything seems to be costing a bit more for owners. Uh, the cost of talent is up. Uh, wages are rising. Uh, I know a, a lot of owners who are adding additional benefits to retain employees. Uh, there's the reverse side as well where some folks are hiring part-time, but the reality is things are costing a bit more these days and that may require some business owners to access capital. What kind of advice do you give to owners who are looking to get some capital? Yeah, this is something that we're familiar with. Uh, we're experiencing the same thing in our business. So it's, it's something that we have to look at when we evaluate what we're doing within our business. So I think the same thing for those uh, business owners. They're going to have to figure out what are we going to do with that capital. Um, so if they're going to come to me uh, you know, as a banker and say, I need to have more capital, my questions are going to be, okay, what are you going to do with it? Um, so I think you know, they're going to have to have their financials in order. Make sure that they have a financial plan of how they're going to use it, how it's going to affect their business. And if they're paying for more talent, how is that going to affect their bottom line? Are they going to make more money by having that talent? Is it going to be less uh, income, cash flow? And then what are their plans for the long term? I think, you know, uh, somebody said to me one time, uh, hope is not a plan. So I think it's really having an idea of what they're going to do with it, how it's going to affect their business, how they're going to compete, and what they're going to do in the future. Um, and maybe how it's different from the past. I mean, uh, business is changing at a very fast pace, so I think they're going to have to really know um, what they're going to do with that capital and, and be able that, to explain that to somebody that they're working with. You seem like you have uh, a lot of conversation with owners. Is that uh, a bank, get to know your bank, or is that kind of the... The moral of the story? Yeah, I think you know what, what we look at is you're going to want to know the people that you're working with. So for us, I want to know the business owner. I want to know their business. I want to have a better understanding of what they do. And I think that's important for them too because they're going to want to work with some people that um, for the long term. You know, these are long term decisions. The business is going to be in the business for a long term. So we want to make sure that you're creating a great relationship with them. When you work with a bank, you're taking on a business partner, and you're going to want to make sure that partner is right for your business. Great. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much. Bye.